Hi, I'm Rebecca Valcarso, and this video is about creative nonfiction. What is it, and what are some techniques we use when we write it? So, first of all, creative nonfiction is a big category. It includes things like memoir or biography. It includes blog posts if they are about personal events and, and personal stories. Um, it includes humor columns when a humorist writes about a funny event, anecdote. Uh, that counts as creative nonfiction too. And of course, the lyric essay or the personal essay, the little piece of memoir that a lot of college students write or that a lot of literary journals publish. So the lyric essay that tells about either a season of real life or an event in real life or an issue that the author has struggled with in real life, all of that counts as creative nonfiction. Now, where does the creative part come in? Because the nonfiction is clear, a real life story of some kind. In fact, newspapers have some creative nonfiction, usually in a feature story, um, not just the straight journalism, but the, the more human interest um, stories. But where does the creative part come from? Well, the creative nonfiction writer has at his or her disposal, their disposal, um, all the techniques of the, of the fiction writer. Dialogue, for example, telling a little uh, bit of conversation inside the essay or inside the memoir. Um, description, sensory details. We have to create a very real world for the reader to keep it interesting. So you want to use those things just like a fiction writer does. Um, that's my cat, <laughs> Zoe. Um, the fiction writer also uses flashbacks and flash, um, you know, time play, playing can happen in nonfiction too. You can definitely flash back to a memory. Um, you can even tell events out of order for artistic effect. It all depends what you're wanting your reader to, to take away. Um, some kind of theme might be best discussed out of linear order, like just the, this happened and then a separate time this happened and then backwards in time this happened but somehow it all comes together to convey an insight and that leads me to what is the kind of bigger project of nonfiction like okay I can tell a real event that happened to me and I can use all these fictional techniques like dialogue and description and okay but why why am I doing this well here I want to reference um, a couple of writers. One is Philip Lopate. He's considered kind of the father of nonfiction. Um, he taught at Bennington College when I was doing my master's work there, and I didn't get to work with him, but um, I did pick up his gigantic book, The Art of the Personal Essay. Most of this book is actual essays, but at the beginning he has interesting information and um, advice, and this quote, He's quoting Michel de Montaigne, who is a French uh, writer who is credited with actually inventing the essay in a lot of ways. So here's Lopate quoting Montaigne. Montaigne says, every man has within himself the entire human condition. Okay, so Montaigne was writing in French and this is a translation, but the entire human condition is inside each of us that's great news for the creative nonfiction writer because it means that my life can be important to you if I write this piece well enough because if I have the human condition within me and you also do and we can connect at that level then our essay can be relevant it can have a point there's a reason to tell you about my experience Honestly, the reader is selfish and wants to learn about themselves and not about the writer per se. So if I'm telling you all about myself, I really want you, the reader, to gain insight into your own life from my writing. So the selfish reader is just like praying and hoping and pleading with the writer, please write something that matters to me. Write something that tells me about life about relationships, about how to get through this, um, you know, difficult planet situation that I'm in <laughs> living here on this planet. 
please writer help me <laughs> so that's what creative nonfiction can do open a new view offer an insight explain how one person coped with something so that the reader can also possibly cope better with their situation okay so yay montaigne i think you're right we all have the human condition now philip lope is helpful in some other ways um, I always refer to him when I start writing creative nonfiction. He says, the essayist attempts to surround a something, a subject, a mood, a problematic irritation. By coming at it from all angles, wheeling and diving like a hawk, each seemingly digressive spiral actually taking us closer to the heart of the matter. In a well-wrought essay, while the search appears to be widening, ever losing its way, it is actually eliminating false hypotheses, narrowing its emotional target, and zeroing in on it. So this is good news, and it gives us another technique, too. It means that your essay doesn't have to just go in a straight line. Like, this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then, like, here's what it meant to me. I mean, that could be a simple personal essay. That would work. But Lopate's describing how the essayist has more freedom than that. The essayist can start here and then wander off over here and discover, oh wait, you know, that does connect back. And then we're going to wander off over here and that does connect back. And eventually we've explored the whole issue and we have done this in front of the reader and the reader has explored it too and we all arrive at some kind of perspective, wisdom, hopefully. <laughs> Okay, so does Lope have anything else we want to grab? Um, in another place, he talks about doing introspective homework before you come to the page. So when you're thinking, what should I write about? You probably have some pretty heavy-hitting, um, emotionally tough things that have happened to you. If you're human, you have been through some tough things. And you may want to write about those things. In fact, it would be powerful if you did write about those things. However, it's going to make a more successful piece of literature if you've done your introspective homework on that topic already. The essay itself might be a process of doing some of that homework, but therapy on the page is not the real goal of creative nonfiction. It's to have something that's already worked through presented to the reader. Um, at least I think you can offer more wisdom if you're kind of on the other side of something. There can be value though in giving people the here I am melting down <laughs> kind of view too. Uh, you know, of course there's a lot of freedom here, but introspective homework is a good thought. Have I done my introspective homework on this topic? And if I have, I really have something to say about it. If I haven't, I'm going to sound um, less mature about it. I'm going to sound petty. I'm going to sound like I'm complaining. And the introspective homework, once you have introspected and come to terms with some things, you have arrived at some peace about this situation, now you're in a good position to write about it and tell others, how did you get, how did you get that little bit of peace? Because we all want piece two. Okay, so that's what Philip Lopate can offer us about creative nonfiction and so much more, but those are some things I picked out. I want to offer another perspective. This is a book called The Situation and the Story by Vivian Gornick, and I was lucky to hear her present a lot of stuff that's in this book um, in person in a lecture, and here's something that really stuck out to me. Every work of literature has both a situation and a story. The situation is the context or circumstance, sometimes the plot. The story is the emotional experience that preoccupies the writer, the insight, the wisdom, the thing one has come to say. So I love this because the thing I have come to say, sometimes I'm not sure what that is until I write, but once I arrive at it, I can revise and make the whole essay look like I knew 
what I had come to say, this insight, this wisdom. And that, she says, is the true story going on behind the events and the plot. The situation, as she calls it, is, you know, the dialogue, the events, the plot, yes, um, just all the storytelling that needs to happen. But that other side, the story, is the internal journey that the writer is on. And that journey turns out to be the most interesting part and the most significant part of a piece of creative nonfiction, in my view. Um, so how do you tuck in that, that story? Like, I'm writing this event, so when do I stop the flow of events and suddenly, like, put some insight or wisdom? Like, how do you do that? I like to think of it this way. Um, when you present an episode or a conversation, it's okay to weave in your reaction. You can say, well, here's what I thought about that. Or here's what um, this made me think of in, um, like, relate to some other thought that I want to mention before coming back to the main line of the story. So you could have episode reflection, episode reflection. And in this way, you have both a horizontal element, this is the events of the plot, the situation unfolding, and then you have a vertical element of wisdom and insight, wisdom and insight reaction and reflection, introspection, all done right on the page in front of the reader. And that'll give you the story element that Vivian Gornick talks about. So you have the horizontal situation and you have the vertical story. So yes, you can also break the fourth wall. That means if you're a theater person, you know, you know, this is when the actor like turns to the audience and like talks to them directly um, breaking that fictional idea that we are separate, like I'm over here having this fictional moment and you're watching, you can break that and say, okay, reader, you're not just watching my story unfold. I'm going to talk right to you. And I'm going to talk to you about that vertical element, my reflections, my introspections, my fears, my worries, my insights, my revelations. I'm going to tell you all of that as I go through the situation, as I tell the events, I'm going to just talk to you and break the fourth wall and say, yep, you and I, we're talking, you know. So that's cool. You can do that. Um, so you can use reflection, introspection, the breaking the fourth wall to break up the, the horizontal story. Um, what else can you do? Let me look at my note here. Um, oh, yes. Digression is another like tool in your toolbox and I already mentioned that with Philip Lope that you can like go off and talk about something that feels like it's off topic but if you relate it back it's going to be interesting you know it'll turn out to be an interesting addition to your your essay um let's see what else um I wanted to mention um that instead of hiding behind a character which is what I do when I write a novel or a short story, no one sees me. The creative nonfiction is completely different. I'm right out there and I am the character and I'm also more than a character in a way. I'm the narrator character and that's the role you're taking on in creative nonfiction. Okay, so I think you're ready to go off and write your own creative nonfiction. I'll give you an exercise if you want to type something right after you this video ends um, try making a big list of events in your life list jobs that you've had trips that you've taken um, what's the worst two or three things that have happened in your life what are the best two or three things that have happened in your life um, list things like um, times when you were a newbie times when you were brand new to a situation and you didn't know uh, how this how this worked or what this place was. Write about times when you had to learn something, like when you were a beginner with learning an instrument or learning a language or learning how to, you know, use a, a application on the computer or your phone. When you switched phones from from Android to iPhone or back or the other way. Times when you had to learn something, make good good topics. 
all those kinds of things uh, have some meaning. And what's cool about creative nonfiction is if you make a list of those experiences and you decide to write about one of them, you have the chance to hold that experience up to the light, you might say, and really examine it and turn it back and forth and twist it and see what it really means. And while I can't tell you the meaning of all life, I can tell you that you'll find meaning in that moment of your life if you write about it in a creative nonfiction piece. So go forth, make meaning, <laughs> and uh, join me for another video sometime.